Okay guys, so we've um, we've done a little bit of pre-shading and um, we've got a base coat on which I've uh, sprayed some clear over as well. Uh, as I've previously said, I'm not a great fan of pre-shading. Uh, I do use it, uh, clearly I use it, you've just seen me use it, uh, but I'm much more of a fan of um, post-shading. I find it far more controllable, um, easier to blend colours together, especially where you've got multiple colours on a model. Uh, it's, um, you can sometimes lose a pre-shading effect in painting multiple colours very easily. So I much prefer post shading and what I'm going to show you now is a little bit of post shading on this condor. Now the condor has a lot of um, fabric covered areas, all the control surfaces are fabric covered and um, the uh, there are wing panels which are fabric covered as well. So what I want to do is highlight those on the model uh, with, with a degree of subtlety, you don't want them really stark and in your face difference but it needs to be a subtle difference so as you can see here what I've done is I've masked off the fabric areas on the underside okay uh, ready for a little bit of post shading um, so what I'm going to do is mix up a slightly lighter shade of blue and I'm literally going to mist it over the model uh, or over the uh, the control surfaces I should say okay uh, so what I've got uh, I'm going back to the the HPC the uh, the finer airbrush of the uh, of the two I use regularly now all I'm going to do is uh, drop a little bit of light blue into a color cup and then I'm going to lighten it up considerably with some white now you might notice here that uh, the uh, the blue I'm using is Guns and the white I'm using is Tamiya. Never had a problem mixing these colours uh, together and spraying them, so I'm, I'm quite happy to do so. So I don't know if you can see that. There's only a very little bit in the in the colour cut. I'm going to uh, cut it back a lot with thinner. Uh, it needs to be cut back really quite severely because all you're doing is misting the uh, the top coat over the control surfaces and the like for for this part of the pre shading. Okay, so as you can see, that is really a, uh, a remarkably thin mixture. Okay, so I'm going to start the compressor up. Okay, that's obviously a very high pressure. It needs to be lightened. The pressure needs to come right down. Okay, and there's a the pressure right down. So as I said, what I'm just going to do is mist this mixture over the uh, the fabric areas. Now I don't know if you can see on that but the actual paint is barely changing the shade of the masking tape at all which gives you some indication of how thin this paint really is. Uh, nevertheless it's, uh, it's quite uh, thick enough to do the job I require of it in tinting those panels. Okay so it's uh, literally a uh, the work of a couple of minutes once masked off to uh, to spray all these uh, these areas off. Okay. Okay. Now, hopefully, you can barely see the difference in uh, in that. That's what I'm aiming for. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, do this area as well. Uh, this is one of those jobs in modelling and, and painting where the amount of time you spend masking for this work far outweighs the amount of time you're actually going to spend at spraying. Because I spent about I spent 20 or 25 minutes masking these areas off before I uh, uh, before I started shooting this part of the uh, the build, and as you can see. That's probably taken me two or three minutes to do that. And that is quite literally that. I'm going to put the lid back on the paint. I'm going to clean my airbrush briefly. And 
and then we'll remove the masking to reveal uh, hopefully a very subtle effect in terms of the uh, pre-shading okay so I'm always nervous when removing uh, masking tape from an acrylic finish because uh, it can pull up quite easily that's why I more normally use um, uh, lacquer finishes but uh, I'm just going to remove this masking I'm hoping you can see that guys, that's actually a very subtle, uh, I've very subtly lightened those areas up. Okay, um, leaving the areas which would be metal in their original colours. patch in the middle of this patch of fabric which, which has a landing light. Uh, it's these little details that really will uh, help your model to, to stand out. Okay, same thing with the tail. Uh, things like the trim tabs which are metal uh, are masked off to remain the original colour. And the fabric areas are, uh, are sprayed with the lighter mix. And that for the underside fabric areas is uh, is more or less that. Um, as I say I'm hoping that you can see the, uh, the, the very subtle uh, change in uh, tones across the fabric areas of this model. There will likely be a little bit of blending uh, through when I'm done here uh, because shortly uh, when I feel that blue is dry enough to be able to mask over I'll be masking and uh, spraying some of the panels in, uh, in a darker colour. Again misting it very lightly over for the darker colour uh, and uh, eventually ending up with a, a kind of multi-toned appearance which I'll then blend through with the original um, light blue to uh, hopefully uh, create a, a very subtly variegated finish on the entire model. Um, so I'll be back shortly with, um, with the, uh, the darker shading.